All right, here we go. Podcasting time. And this is going to be a doozy of a podcast. I'm joined by Craig Fernandez. You're going to love this guy. 2019, he was named as future star of the Arabian business or of business in Arabia at the Arabian Business Awards. We'll get exactly what it is in a second. 2021 Young CEO of the Year, Mina, in the CEO Excellence Awards, helping students find funding, helping students to get the best schools to go to, helping students to understand what is going on. He's done some amazing things, and we're going to find all about what he's done and I hope inspire you to want to become an entrepreneur yourself. With that being said, Craig, welcome to the podcast. Hi, James. Hi. Thanks for having me. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. You reached out to me months ago. I've been putting you off because I said, oh, you know, some stuff's think, coming I on. Think, I think three or four yeah. months ago. If yeah, anything, three, it's been a while. <laughs> and, I, and I kept saying, oh, look, I'm on a country. I'm going to be back. Then, then this happened. And then this is, maybe this is going to happen. This is, I don't know when I can do this. And finally, I just said, you know what? You, if you can come to me, as opposed to me meeting you at the Rove or somewhere else, if you can come to me, we're golden. And you said, okay, I can do that. hundred percent. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't even know how, I think like one of your podcasts stumbled, stumbled into my LinkedIn feed one day and I listened to it and I was like, damn, like, this is really cool. I want to feature on this. Let me be shameless. Let me reach out. Let me see if there's an opportunity here. Um, so I was, I've been super excited, super excited about this for the last three months. Um, so thanks for having me. Honestly. Nice. Wonderful. Hey, you know what, you know, what really excites me is you talk to a lot of folks who've gone to school here and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You basically grew up in the UAE, ended up doing a stint of going to school in North America, in the U S in Iowa. And then you came back like you are the success story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it goes against the green, you know, like it was very, very interesting, I think. So before Secure My Scholarship, we actually launched a startup called Lock and Stock. And I got the idea for Lock and Stock in my final semester at university. Where were ba- you going? I was at the University of Iowa in the okay. US. Okay, so that's where you got the idea of Lock and Stock. That's where I got the idea for Lock okay. and Stock. Yeah, I was, in a, I was in a classroom, it was an econ lecture, and I noticed all of these students and all of these kids on their phones and tablets and laptops. <laughs> and I said, okay, fine, let's do something about this. Now, that was my final semester of university. I had six months to graduate. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of job offers. I, have a, I had a couple of um, job offers. I had a couple of interviews lined up. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. But I think some... What, what, was, what was going... What were, what were you thinking that you wanted to? Because lock and stock came up. But what were, what were some of the B plans? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, the, the, the B plan, I wouldn't even say it was a B plan. It was like a primary plan at that time yeah. was to stay in the States, get a job, get the green card, get the passport, like yeah, typical yeah. like immigrant story per se. Yeah, yeah. What my mother really wanted me to do as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like, but I think something about me has always been that I have been a person who always wanted to solve problems. Okay. I wanted to solve problems. I, I like creating innovative solutions two problems and then working those out. So lock and stock, you're in a class, you see everyone's on their phones, you realize, okay, hold on. Professors hate it when students are on their phones. How can I mix the using your phone and not using your phone, gamify it, reward it, that's where it started to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really about, okay, fine. All of these kids are on their phones. Yeah. What can we do about it? And I spoke to a bunch of my friends and I said, how can we help students stay off their phones? And they told me, man, like, how are you going to do that? Like, how are you going to compete with Instagram and Facebook and and LinkedIn and YouTube and whatever? Um, And then we were brainstorming. And, you know, I think somebody said, like, I'm broke right now. If somebody gave me, like, a 50% off at the Papa John's, maybe I'd stay off my phone. And we were just like, okay, that's, that's an interesting idea. Why don't we give people offers and discounts? And the only thing they have to do is stay off their mobile device when they're in class. It sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We launched on September 24th, 2017. So I came back from the U.S. In cor- I came back from the U.S. in May of 2017. We incorporated in June, and we launched on September 24th, 2017. We launched with zero users, zero students, and 12 partner brands. Within a year and a half, we had 60,000 students on the platform wow. and 1,200 partner brands wow. on Lock and Stock. Wow, that it is was amazing. Huge. It was That's huge. Amazing. We had basically inadvertently created the largest <laughs> student lifestyle platform <laughs> in the country. And it was massive, literally. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By accident. By accident, literally. <laughs> we had no idea 
it would ever get to where it got in time. But we just we just ran with it. We were a bunch yeah. of I think I was twenty one years old when we launched Lock and Stock. My yeah. my other team members were also twenty one, twenty three, twenty two, whatever. We were all just a bunch of young guys, yeah. and we were like, "This Living is cool. Dream. This, <laughs> this this is cool. This is fun. Let's do it." And we went from you know just regular people to. Um, these like tech entrepreneurs basically overnight and it was it was man I'm telling you like 20 you go back to like 2019 2020 um, especially pre-covid and lock and stock was ubiquitous in high schools and colleges and universities around Dubai it was everywhere literally um, if you were a student between the ages of 16 and 22 23 in the city Odds are you were either using lock and stock or you used to be using lock and stock or your best friend was using lock and stock or whatever. To this day, even though lock and stock is no longer operational, to this day, I will still wear my lock and stock shirt on the metro and two or three or four people will walk up to me and go like, oh my God, lock and stock. Wow. Like we used to love this application back in college. And I'd be like, yeah, well, you know, that's that's awesome. So, so what happened with lock and stock? Why? What made you decide? I mean, obviously you morphed into something else, but... What what was the decision making moment that hey we've got to put things on pause? Yeah, I mean like so the only um, so everything that we built was fantastic, right? The yeah. ecosystem was great. We had a yeah. lot of students, we had a lot of brands, all of that stuff. The only real problem was we weren't really making money, right? Which is always the problem, isn't it? It's, it's always the problem. Great ideas, people love it. How, what's my revenue stream? What's, what's that part for me? Exactly, exactly. We weren't able to monetize very well. Mm. And here in the UAE, it's not like, so a lot of people like to talk about Dubai startup scene, the tech scene here in Dubai. We just had Jitex North Star, yeah, all yeah. of that stuff. But, but truth be told, Dubai is not San Francisco. Dubai is not Bangalore. Dubai is not London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is hard for startups to get funding over here. And I remember I'd go into these pitches and I'd say we have, 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 students in Dubai on the platform. Which is, when, I mean, I'm listening to these numbers. That is extraordinary. It's huge. It's huge. Considering that there are only 200-something thousand students in yeah. Dubai, <laughs> 80,000 is a lot of them, literally. We basically have near full market penetration. Um, but all, the, all, all that we would hear was, how much did you make? How much are you projecting? Yeah, what yeah, does your yeah. revenue look like? And we weren't able to monetize. <clears throat> now... Something around mid-2020 happened, which was super interesting. At this point in time, okay, fine, like we still have some cash in the bank and we're doing a few things here and there, but nothing's really repeatable or scalable. So yeah. we're earning some revenue and we have some cash, but it's not really like our revenue numbers aren't growing that much. Um, and a so you've got to make tough, tough decisions at this point. Yeah, yeah. No, so 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 actually it's it's super interesting what happened. I, I, think, a, I think a very um, a repeating instance in our story is just the presence of luck and accident <laughs> i think you honestly know what? You, you know what you listen to gary v and he will say the same thing hard work and luck yeah, yeah. Like, it'll pay off eventually but there's also right place right time right people right situation it all comes together you're either prepared to grab it by the horns and ride it out or you it, it gets past you and, and you wait for the next one. Yeah, I mean, I think the phrase is uh, luck is where opportunity meets preparation, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, exact, exactly, right? So so you got lucky. Around the summer of 2020, um, a university actually reached out to us. Oh, And oh. the university said, listen, we're a university. We want students. This was like a not a very well-known university here in Dubai, a rather small university, whatever. Uh, but they reached out. They said, listen, we're a university. We want students. You guys have a lot of students. How can we work together? Now, at this point in time, you know, like beggars can't be choosers. We were running out of cash. We needed, we needed to make, we needed to drive revenue. So we said, okay, fine. We'll run a campaign for you. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we ran a campaign for that university. And in a month, I think we earned about a hundred something thousand dirhams. Um, in one month with the campaign, with that university. The only thing that we did was we told people, um, okay, when you apply to this university through our platform, you will get a guaranteed 15,000 dirham scholarship when you apply through lock and stock. That was the only thing that we did per se. And it worked. And we were like, I, I remember like after the campaign, we're, we're there scratching our heads and going, okay, that's interesting. Uh, didn't expect it to work so well. Um, but it was fantastic. That was the first one. Then we went and we signed a couple more and we ran a second campaign with a bunch of universities. That one did really well as well. And they all had the same mechanics. And we we really just got to thinking and we said, okay, fine. Have we 
accidentally stumbled upon a much larger problem here. Helping students stay off their phones when they're in class is a very noble thing. I mean, that's yeah. great. In our time with lock and stock, we accounted for about 2 million years of cumulative time spent yeah, offline. Yeah. 2 million, two years, million years, years of cumulative time spent offline. And that's time that we put back in the hands of students for learning, professors, educators, teachers. Yeah. We're, we're very, very proud of that. But we, were, we sat around the table and we said, you know, have we stumbled upon something much bigger, right? Because if students, if the, if the response to fee waivers and scholarships is so much, is there a problem that is not being solved over here? So what we did was we spoke to a lot of our users. We spoke to about 100 or 200 something students and we asked them, what are your main pain points? What are your problem areas that you face? Now, if you ask an 18-year-old what problems they have, they will tell you a lot of things. Literally, you ask an 18-year-old yeah, yeah. how many problems they have, they will name 45 <laughs> different things. Yeah, they, they got two sheets of paper front and back, and it's, <laughs> and it's, it's single-spaced. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, so we, we, we asked a lot of these students, you know, what were, the, what were the issues that you faced in your life? And, you know, they'd all name different things. They all have different pain points that they have. Yeah. But something that was consistent across many of them was quality university is difficult to afford. It is expensive to go to top universities in Dubai, in the USA, in the UK, and around the world. Um, and that's something that kept coming up. Um, and we said, okay, let's do something about that. Uh, because, as I said, like helping people stay off their phones is noble, but helping make higher education accessible and affordable, that's amazing. And that is a problem that exists not just in Dubai, not just in the UAE, um, but in every single city, in every single country in the world. It exists across nationalities, across religions, castes, creed, ethnicities. It exists everywhere. So we said, let's go out there and let's solve this. So we basically pivoted the entire company from lock and stock into securemyscholarship.com, which is an ed tech platform that connects students with scholarships and, at and universities. I love the title because it's exactly what it does, securemyscholarship.com. I'm going to secure your scholarship Boom. That's another point where we got extremely lucky with. I can't believe we got that brand name, that URL. I will meet people and tell them we are Secure My Scholarship and we're securemyscholarship.com. And they will say, wow, you got that URL? <laughs> and yeah, we say, yeah. That's yeah. another point where we lucked up, really. Yeah, yeah. But securemyscholarship.com is an ed tech platform that connects students with scholarships in Dubai, in the USA, in the UK. We work with about 350 odd universities around the world. Wow. We work with every single private university here in the UAE. I mean, we're Dubai born and bred. So we work with every single private university here in the UAE. And we work with about 160 or 70 odd universities in the US. We work with about 130 odd universities in the UK. And we want to add Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, Ireland, and more along the way. Um, but that's, that's what we have so far. So how does it work? Um, it's super simple, actually. You know, you come to securemyscholarship.com. So you go, and I got to say, I went online, took a look, I, and I just took a walk through. I didn't, I didn't, you know, enter any of the sign of this, but I wanted to find out what it's about. What a clean and easy experience. Yeah, yeah. But talk um, about user friendly. I've been to a lot of websites that claim to be working for me and helping me, and they're making me work. You didn't make me work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, like at the end of the day, you know, we had to understand that our target audience are students. You know, yeah. they're 17 years old, they're 16 years old. Um, and they, 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 if you're a student today and you grew up in the technological age, man, you don't want to see bad UI. You don't want to have oh, bad yeah. UX. Your, the, your tolerance for BS on the yeah. web is yeah. very low. And any friction, I'm moving, I'm moving away. As soon as I get friction on that web page, I'm done. Exactly. And if it's not mobile, mobile optimized, I'm out. You lost Literally, me. I'm out. You lost, you lost me. me. You got so the way the way we look at things is you got three seconds to convince someone to stay on the website. That's it. We got three seconds to keep them on the website, or we lost them forever. Within three seconds, they're going to get a WhatsApp notification or an Instagram notification or whatever, and they're out. They're gone. Yeah. Literally. That's amazing. Yeah. So the process that we build is super simple. You know, you go online, you come to securemyscholarship.com. And there's a big fat search bar right on the homepage. <laughs> you enter yeah. in the name of the university that you want. And as long as it's on the platform, you can navigate to that page. There's a big fat button that says secure scholarship. You click on that and you go on to enter in the information. And within 
I think it's about a five minute process. You fill up all the information in five minutes. And when you're done with that, you've basically submitted an application to the university and for the scholarship simultaneously. The contract that we have with our university partners is very simple. As long as a student applies to the university through Secure My Scholarship, they will get the scholarship listed on the website. And it's that simple. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it almost sounds too good to be true. Uh, a lot of people say that a lot of the time. I'm not going to lie, man. Like, like you put yourself in the shoes of a typical middle class or working class family. Imagine you didn't know who I was. And imagine I met you in a restaurant or a bar and I came up to you and I said, listen, hey, when you come to our website, it's for free. You come there, you enter in all your information and we'll help you save 30,000 dirhams to university for free. You're going to think, I mean, what's the catch? Like, are you punking me? What's the catch? Exactly. It's, it's the thing. Like, I've been taught um, the, where, where I come from. You know, I was taught from the time I was five years old. There is no free lunch. Everyone's told this. Everyone's there, told this. There's exactly. a catch. There's, what's the catch? What's Everyone, the catch? What's the fine gonna, print? Yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah. And so, and so uh, when, we, when we market Secure My Scholarship and we say it's free, people say, no, this is too good to be true. You know, a student will find Secure My Scholarship and go tell their parents and say, you know, mom, dad, I found Secure My Scholarship. And mom, dad says, no, don't, don't believe these guys. <laughs> this is not real. So we gotta, we, we're actually working very, very hard at really building up our brand identity, building up our credibility per se, to tell people, no, we're here and we exist. You know, James, honestly, like our, our North Star with Secure My Scholarship, because this, this really is a problem. I'll give you a stat. <clears throat> A couple of years ago, there was a research paper that was released on the state of higher education financing. Now, in 2020, in 2019, sorry, one year before COVID, 5 million students went overseas to top quality universities around the world. That's awesome. 5 million students yeah. is great, but it obscures the fact that there were 20 million other students who wanted to go overseas but could not simply because they couldn't afford it. For every one student that goes to a top quality university somewhere around the world, there are four students who want to but cannot. Man, that's that's not fair. Honestly. It's not fair. And, it's not and fair. that's a great market to tap into. So on two sides, one, look, we want accessibility. We want people to be able to realize their dreams. And hey, there's a business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean I mean, so at the end of the day, you know, we're not running a nonprofit or like yeah, a charity. Yeah. We what we wanted to do. And something that I have always personally wanted to do was build companies. And that's what we did mm. with Lock and Stock. That's what we're doing now with Secure My Scholarship was to build brands and products that had the potential to become billion dollar companies. Literally, we want to build, uh, we, we make no, we, we, we don't shy away from the fact, that for, we don't shy away from the fact from saying that we want to build the UAE's first ed tech unicorn. I want to build the UAE's first ed tech billion dollar startup. There has never been one before. And I want us to do that. But at the same time, I want us to build a company that has the potential to impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Our North Star with Secure My Scholarship is to disperse $100 million in scholarships to students in the UAE. I'm talking Bardabai, Karama, Sharjah, Gisess, Ajman, all across the UAE, Abu Dhabi, um, all across the UAE, in India, in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh. $100 million in scholarships to students from hardworking families around the world. And that's what we want to do at Secure My Scholarship. I, I love the idea. It's almost like a, you know, it, I almost see you guys with capes on because you're helping people you're, and you're making money, but you're not making money off the backs of the people you're helping. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which, is, which has got to be the piece when people look at it, when parents look at it and go, hold on a second, is there a subscription fee? Is there a membership fee? Is there, is there, is there, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, I mean, we wanted to make it as easy and as simple as possible. Uh, we launched Secure My Scholarship in November of 2021. In the two years that we have been around, in the two years that Secure My Scholarship has been in existence, we have dispersed over $7 million in scholarships through our platform. And that's something that we are very, very proud of. Um, you speak, <clears throat> if you speak to the people on our team, they have stories of them speaking to parents, speaking to mothers, fathers, um, students themselves, where, you know, the, the, the joy and the happiness on their faces when they are given their scholarships, when they are awarded, awarded their scholarships, when they receive whatever bursary or fee waiver they're applying for, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's truly tremendous. People on our team, I have personally seen parents cry 
when they've gotten the scholarships that they've gotten. And and over the last two years, you know, we've had students who come from single parent households. We have students who've been recovering from illness. We've had students who come from broken homes, who've gone through our platform and are able to study at the universities that they want to study at. Keep in mind, key word there being want. <laughs> Everybody will tell you, no, you know, when I remember when I wanted to go to university, I told my parents I wanted to go to America to study. They told me, listen, it's it's too expensive. You know, we can't afford to send you to America. You got to pick something more realistic. And I hate that word. I hate being told, yeah, be it's realistic. Compr- it's compromising. Yeah, it's compromising. Why do, have, why do you have to compromise on your education? Nobody should ever have to compromise on their dreams. Um, so I wanted to go to America. Um, and I worked very, very hard. And I applied to a bunch of universities. And I got the scholarships that I got, which allowed me to go. But I remember what a pain in the ass it was to get those scholarships back then. Well, do you think part of the problem is, I mean, the, the universities, colleges, they have money to give away. Yeah. But it is not always a linear line from application to the institution as well as application to get the money. Higher education in the 21st century has become incre- increasingly and incredibly commoditized. It is seen as a product to sell. Um, and can we jack up the tuition every year? How can we restrict uh, how can we restrict student body sizes to maximize net revenue? These are the numbers and the calculations that go into it. Gone are the days when higher education was a public resource. Those days are long gone. Um, and so it's a different world that we live in, which is why, you know, for so many students, they are they're locked out of quality higher education, and we are on a mission to change that. When you approach institutions, and I, I, I mean, I'm really curious about this. And you, you talk to them about secure my scholarship. Do you, do you often also get scholarships and fee waivers and bursaries that only could be acquired through your portal? <clears throat> yes, we do. Which, um, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. There are exclusive secure my scholarship scholarships available. Um, and you know, the, I'd say about out of the 350 odd universities we have on the platform. Not all of them have this available. A, a chunk of them, about like 50 or 100 universities, have exclusive scholarships available for SMS students. Um, but with the other 200, you know, what we're a large part of the value that we provide <clears throat> is that we take these scholarships and we take these fee waivers and we categorize it and we make yeah. the entire process transparent and, and easy to apply for. Easy to apply for. It takes five minutes, literally yeah, five like, minutes. Who's not going to apply for that? <laughs> you can you can do we wanted to make the process as simple and as easy as possible. We don't even ask for that much information, honestly. Um, it's as simple and as easy as possible. You can do it from your bedroom. You can do it while sitting on your bed. You don't have to leave your house. And within five minutes, you've applied for a scholarship that could save you a hundred thousand dirhams at university. And that's that's phenomenal. That's fantastic. You guys also do more than just help people get scholarships, so. We have a full range support team as well. So the scholarship is the main thing that we want to assist the student with. Um, And if the student then needs additional support, we can assist the student with, you know, course selection or university selection, visa application assistance. There are a bunch of ancillary support, uh, 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 ancillary support services that we provide to students. Uh, But the scholarship is the core aim of our product. The rest are all optional. I mean, it's really just uh, when we began and we had a, when we had our first cohort of students that went through, um, a lot of them came back to us and said, Hey, listen, you know, it was great if you guys could offer this or offer that. It's a little complicated for us. So we said, okay, fine. Like, Let's see if we can offer additional support to our students just to make the entire value proposition look yeah. better, per se. When you kicked off, when you morphed from lock and stock to secure my scholarship, you, you didn't have a giant team, but your team has grown exponentially. Yeah. That's, um, and, that, and we were talking about this as you were coming in, how this changes your role as a co-founder, as someone who's leading an organization it, it's it's requiring a little bit change of your perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I'd say when we first made the pivot from Lock and Stock to Secure My Scholarship, we had six people on the team, I think. Six people on the team, I think. Six people could be six people you can put into a car, go out for dinner, <laughs> have your entire meeting, get out some napkins, and sort things out. Six, uh, uh, six people is that easy. Yeah, 100%. It's a, it's a small team, right? Yeah. Six very committed individuals was back then in 2021. Um, today, we have about 
25, 27. Uh, I, I lose track of the numbers sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's but big. we have we have twenty five odd people on the team today. So it's really a quadrupling of size in the last two years. And we think, you know, we're growing very, very quickly. We're hiring, I think, three new people right now. Based on our projections, I think by the end of next year or early 2025, we should be at about 50 and then on and on from there. Um, As we really grow our headcount, back in 2021, we had six people all in Dubai as well. Today, we got 25 odd people based in five different countries around the world. Our chief design officer is in Australia. We have somebody else in Indonesia. We have a full-stack developer in Malaysia. We have a lot of people in India. We had someone in Pakistan. Um, And of course, the founding team is all still based here in Dubai. But we have people all across the world. It's a large team now. And as you very rightly said, man, that changes my role on the team. I'm curious, how how has that impacted on you and how has that changed some of your thinking about what you do as an organization. So not changing what Secure My Scholarship does, but changing how you think about the people that are helping you and the resources that you're using to achieve what you're aiming to do. So I guess I guess the way to like look at that is really where the company's at in its trajectory, mm. right? And I think headcount might be the wrong metric for this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> where, when, when we were much smaller, when we had zero in revenue or 10,000 or 20,000, then, man, I was in the trenches, sleeves rolled up, whatever, like, let's get it done, per se. Um, but as the companies got, got larger and larger and larger, my focus has to shift towards scale, right? Because... This year, we're on course for $1.5 million in revenue, and that's amazing. So to get from zero to $1.5 million, that was incredibly difficult. It was a very small team, and okay, fine, like everybody's doing everything, yada, yada. Now to get from $1.5 million to $10 million, that's going to require a whole different mindset, a whole different range of responsibilities, as my focus now shifts to growth and scale and really just turning that curve exponentially upwards. And then, I mean, once we get to 10 million, how do we get to 100 million? And then on and on we go from there. But my role really shifted more from like operations. You know, I remember two and a half years ago, I was looking at every single social media graphic, um, approving or providing feedback. I was looking at emails. I was, look, I was making sales calls. I was doing everything, literally, or involved everywhere. Today, my role is more external. Um, it's about speaking with the press. It's about doing podcasts like this. It's about uh, speaking with shareholders, pitching new investors. That's that's really my role now as we look to then scale SMS because, as I said earlier, our mission is to disperse $100 million in scholarships. If we don't scale, if we can't pull off that trajectory, the, the, two, move, the two move in parallel, right? So if we can move from $1 million in revenue to $10 million in revenue, we will also move from $7 million in scholarships dispersed to $70 million in scholarships dispersed. So the two move in parallel. If we are to achieve our mission, my role has to change in that regard. Do you miss the startup pace? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> yes, sometimes. And see, honestly, you know, I'm, I'm, I've always been an entrepreneur at yeah. heart. Um, I launched my first company when I was 13 years old. Uh, we used to organize football tournaments around Dubai. It's called Craig and Savio's Football Tournaments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I launched my second company when I was 18. It was called Football on Wheels. We used to bus people to away football games in the U.S. Um, I launched my third company when I was 19 years old. It was called Store to Your Door. It's kind of like Instacart or Instashop before Instacart or Instashop. Uh, where we used to get orders and then go to Walmart and pick up the order and then come back. All right. Um, and then lock and stock and then secure my scholarship. So I've always been an entrepreneur at heart for as long as I can remember, for most of my life, really. Um, I've been building companies or starting ventures and, you know, earning some money or trying to, like, hustle my way out of it. Um, so, yes, I do miss it. Um, I think it's in my DNA, honestly. Um, and, you know, honestly, like, Sometimes the team has to come back because I'm I'm always full of ideas. I always want to do this, do that, do this, do that. Can we launch this new product or can we launch this new subservice or whatever on the platform? And sometimes the team has to come back to me and say, "Craig, listen, you know, we, this 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 is the roadmap. This is what we're focusing on. This is what we got to do." And then I got to I got to remind myself that focus is now super important. The age or the time for, you know, try out different things. I think they call it bullseye marketing or bullseye product development. We just try out a whole bunch of different things and see what works. 
the age of that, I think, in the life cycle of Secure My Scholarship and Lock and Stock before that is now over. We know what works. We know what's working. Now is the time to focus and actually just build, per se. One of the interesting points, and we'll, we'll come back to that, but one of the interesting points that I want to just just dive over to for a few minutes is your co-founder was your dad. Yeah, yeah, how, yeah. So how how is that? How is, <laughs> I mean, obviously it works really well because co-founder for both Lock and Stock and Secure My Scholarship, but how, how, how did that influence or temper your style of creating um, these, these ventures? Yeah, I mean, um, see, uh, I think just to put it plainly, right? So Dubai is not like San Francisco or Bangalore Which or is London. something you stated right from the very beginning. When we talk about investment and venture capital for ideas, it's hard here. It's it's extremely hard. Um, and the thing is, um, it is extremely... In, in, in San Francisco, I have friends who went to San Fran after university and pitched someone with an idea and got a million dollars to go and build it. Um, and that's, that's, that's San Francisco per se, but, but it's, it's similar also in like a Bangalore or a London or whatever. Yeah. In Dubai, it's not. I mean, they make like a, a lot of noise is made about Dubai's like startup scene, but it's very nascent. I think it's getting there and maybe give it five or 10 more years, but it, and it, it, it will get there. But right now it's still developing. And keep in mind, we launched Lock and Stock six years ago, so 2017, so a long time before even today. In Dubai, one of the main problems that you find with startups is that early stage funding is very, very negligible. Mm. Um, the amount of funding that early stage startups get is, um, it's, 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 it's very, very small. There are a lot of VC firms who will fund you at Series A or later. Um, there are a lot of um, investment options available for institutional capital that comes at the growth phase but for at the but if you're at the idea phase or you know product market fit or seed round or whatever it's very hard to get capital um and i think what really got this journey going was my dad <clears throat> i grew up in dubai i was born in dubai i grew up in dubai i've spent my entire life in the city um i'd like to say i know in excess of a thousand people who also grew up in Dubai. And I'll tell you, man, you know, honestly, where I come from in, you know, I like to call it real Dubai, really. Um, but in, you know, you look at, don't, don't look at, don't look at, you know, Marina, JLT, JBR, th those things came up like five or six years ago. Look at real Dubai, look at Bar Dubai, look at Karama, look at Gisas, look at Dara. Entrepreneurship is non-existent. It's, it's just not, it's, it just doesn't exist. Nobody, goes to university and then says, oh, you know, we're going to launch this startup. It just doesn't exist. Um, and I think we were able to do what we did because I had someone in my corner who said, listen, Craig, like what you have is a great idea and I'll fund it. I'll write you your first check, friends and family round. Let's get to work. And I think that made all the difference, literally. Uh, my dad was... Co-founder, yes, but also our first believer. There's a phrase that I like, and it applies especially so to startups and entrepreneurship. And it goes, blessed are those who believe yet cannot see. And my dad was the first one who believed in us. Um, and the reason I'm sitting here today is because he wrote us that check six years ago to get us off the ground. Um, and yeah, that's, I think, that story. What, what's your advice to those entrepreneurs anywhere in the world? There's, there are people who are listening to this right now going, oh, I've got this great idea, but they can't, they just can't take the first step. What's your advice to those folks? Because uh, you, you know these people. Yeah. Um, my advice, honestly, is to just do it, literally. Not to paraphrase Nike or anything, uh, but to <laughs> just, just do it. Just get out there and do it. I remember um, before we launched Lock and Stock, you know, I got the idea for Lock and Stock in my final semester of university. And now I, I'd find myself sitting in classrooms and just sketching out designs for the application. The original application, it looked terrible, honestly, compared to what it looked like later on. The first version, like V1, when we first went live on the App Store and the Play Store, it looked like shit. It looked horrible. <laughs> um, and that was something that I had designed on PowerPoint, literally. But I did it because I was like, okay, fine. This is what I see in my head. This is I'm the tool gonna... I know how to use. This is what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. I, I got to get my ideas down. Exactly, exactly. Like, like this is what, like, I, this is what I'm imagining in my head. 
This is how I'm going to visualize it. Now I got to find someone who can build it for me. Okay, fine, found that person. Let's get to work. But at the end of the day, you just got to get started. Um, that's the hardest part, I think. Like most ideas die as they are ideas. Literally, no one ever does anything about them. There's this quote from Jeff Bezos that I actually like, and it's something that drove me a lot in the beginning. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos, and I'm not sure if you know the story of like, you know, Amazon's formative years, but Bezos basically was 30 something. He had a wife, he had a kid or two kids, I think. And he had a cushy software engineering job um, at an investment bank on Wall Street. And he quit that and he moved across the country from New York to Seattle and bought a house and moved his family there, took the, took the kids out of school, moved his family there, whatever. And he launched Amazon from his garage. And today, Amazon is what it is. But at that time, it was an incredibly risky move. I mean, you quit a very nice job. You took your wife. You took your kids. He had no savings as well. I think you read the early story of Amazon. He had to borrow $300,000 from his dad to launch Amazon. Um, but a couple of years later, an interviewer asked Jeff Bezos, you know, why did you do this? Like, this is crazy. Why did you do this? Uh, you had an idea for sure, but it's, it's so risky. And, you know, how, like what made you do it? And Bezos said something in 1995 or 1996 or whatever, but something that I really like and something that I think every single entrepreneur should always remember. He said, my biggest uh, fear in life is, you know, not death or bankruptcy or taxes or anything. My biggest fear in life is regret having regrets my biggest driver in life is regret minimization he said i don't want to wake up when i'm 50 years old or 55 or 56 or 57 and think to myself damn i should have done that or shit i wish i had done that i never want to have that i never want to wake up with those regrets so i'm just gonna do it and this resonated with me a lot in our early years in 2017 in 2018 um, and really kept me going. Just regret minimization. Mm. Whether whether it works or not, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> but you don't have any regrets either. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any regrets either. Exactly. I don't have a crystal ball. But at that point in time, with Lock and Stock, we were trying to build the. We were trying to build a platform that could help 50 million people around the world live healthier, more productive lives. That was awesome. Then we pivoted that to secure my scholarship, where we're trying to help disperse a hundred million dollars in scholarships to people from the middle class and the working class. That's, that's amazing. Whether it works or it doesn't work, I have no idea. But I'm so happy and I'm so excited that we are doing what we're doing. And I wake up every day in the morning excited to do the things that we're going to do. And that's it. Wait, that's life. It's, it's not a better way to be. Exactly. That's life. Um, I mean, uh, as one, of the, one of the cons with startups is, okay, fine, you know, maybe you got to pay yourself less or this or that. Or you got to work 24-7. You got to hustle, whatever. But I'm okay with that. Hey, it's it's your thing. It's, it's your thing. It's my thing. It's my thing. Exactly. Because I love what I do. And so if you're a startup founder, you know, if you want to start up, if you want to launch a startup, if you want to be an entrepreneur, um, I'd say find something you love doing as well. Like, because it gets difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, the initial excitement and euphoria lasts for about two or three months, maybe five months, maybe six months, whatever. But once you're done with that, after the first six months are over, then reality begins to set in and things get super difficult, <laughs> super fast. And the walls seem to close in around you. Well, and, and at this point you got 25 people that, you know, you've got to put shoes on their feet, food in their fridges. This, this has to work because it's not just you and a small group of people around a table. Okay. Yeah. We can go get a job at something. You, you got, 25 people dispersed around the world. 25 people with families, yeah. with husbands or wives yeah. or kids. They got bills to pay 100%. And well, I am responsible some days, for some all days of this. you got to wake up in the middle of the night. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> more, <laughs> more often than you may think. <laughs> where, where, where do you see all this going? I mean, I don't, I don't mean secure my scholarship because we know where that's going. And, but you as an entrepreneur, one of the things that in, in the short time that we've been talking, and you've gone through a list of all of the cool projects you've created to where you are now. There's got to be another project. There's got to be something you're going, I'm just waiting for the right moment. What, what's, what's grabbing your attention today? Um, so I've always been someone who likes working on things that make a real difference in the world. Um, 
I'm not someone who will, for example, you know, work at like a like a like a online car e-commerce platform. Not not taking anything away from those. Oh, yeah, you know, those are great. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a lot of them, and, <laughs> and those are great. But I, I I like to work on things that I actually care about. Okay. Um, and that's just something that I've learned about myself. When the going gets tough, you know, understand why you're doing what you're doing, and that will give you the motivation to persevere through tough times. Um, something that I've actually been really passionate about, and something that I want to do sometime in the future, is uh, working on water tech. I think that water or access to water is going to be the world's next big problem. I don't think enough people are looking at it or thinking about it or talking about it. I think there's more funding that goes into space exploration than there is that goes into water technology or like finding innovative ways to solve water. We have a lot of water in the, in the, in the world. Most of it is salt water. We can't drink that. How do we solve this? What do we do about this? And I think that that is something that, that we need to do. And it's something that I care about personally. Um, so, you know, I don't know, maybe five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I don't know. Um, that's an area that I want to be involved in. Education is also an area that I love and that I want to see myself being a part of. So I don't know, uh, I don't know where Secure My Scholarship will go. Um, you know, whether we exit or we IPO or I don't know where Secure My Scholarship will go, but I hope to be involved with Secure My Scholarship. For I hope Secure My Scholarship will do its thing forever, honestly, because students will always need scholarships. Yeah. Um, but even alongside Secure My Scholarship, you know, I still want to be involved in education, I think. You ever thought of going back to school? Um, as a professor, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as a professor, yes. Um, I think that, you know, like, I'd love, I, I, I love speaking with young people. Yeah. Um, something that I've learned in over the last couple of years, I've spoken at a lot of schools and colleges. I've spoken at easily 20 plus schools here in Dubai. And I've spoken at every single university here in Dubai. Um, as well as a couple of universities around the world. And something that I love is when... When I speak to these students at these schools and universities, you know, they, 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 they look at me like I've um, invented fire or so I discovered fire um, because... But you have. You have, <laughs> in a sense. You, you, you really have discovered a way to make it much easier for students to find the money that is out there to help them make it easier. More, more than that, more than that. It's about um, actually doing this, right? Because... Again, you know, if you... You're if not you, just showing them the way. You're enabling them to get it. In, yeah. And fast. Yeah. And fast. <laughs> and fast as well. But, like, but like it's, 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 about, it's about dreams, I think. Um, if you're a student from a middle-class family, hard-working middle-class family, you read about Elon Musk and, and Sergey Brin or Larry Page or Steve Jobs or whatever, you'll see them on LinkedIn or on Facebook or whatever, uh, you'll read articles about them in the Harvard Business Review or whatever that may be. But I'd venture to guess that most people who come from those, who come from just regular people, most regular people, don't know anyone who's launched a startup, don't know anyone who knows anyone or anything like that. So all of these people sound like myths and legends. Um, and that's why I said like, I grew up in I grew up in Gisas in Dubai, which is a very like down to earth neighborhood in very, Dubai. Really, very, just very. sort of the earth neighborhood in Dubai. What a great place to live! <laughs> I mean, I mean, th th I think this becomes an, a sidetrack here for a second, but this becomes another interesting piece of your story. Is when people talk about Dubai, as you said, JLT. I mean, okay, it's a part of Dubai, but it's it is not. It, I mean, I've I've been here what twenty four years. And JLT is not a play. When people say, oh, JLT, it's like, uh, okay. Yeah. Kusais, Alcos. You know, I, I mean, I live in Murdiff, and I've lived in the same place the entire time I've lived here. And yeah. that, so I've kind of seen Murdiff go from the camel farm that was beside my house to, <laughs> you know, two blocks down. Now there's a mall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean. Yeah, Kusais uh, is a very, I mean, that's, that's Dubai. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, it's just different, I think. Yeah. Like, there's, there's new Dubai and there's traditional Dubai, per se. Yeah. Um, and if you're from traditional Dubai, you know, like, like you don't, you don't know anyone who's launched a startup <laughs> or anything, uh, which is why when, when, when I go to these schools and when I speak, speak at these schools or speak at these universities, you're from here. Um, you're from students, here. students look at me and they say, you're man, from their neighborhood. Yeah. They look at me and they say, man, like, 
how did you do it? Right? Because, you know, they've all got ideas. Yeah. And they all, everybody knows who Mark Zuckerberg is and Steve Jobs is and whatever. But to them, that that is not possible. Like, they, they have been told since birth, go to school, graduate, go to university, graduate and get a job. And that's your life. And that's what everybody from those circumstances have to do. Um, and so for them to see, to see someone who comes from where they come from, um, who's, I guess, doing it differently, I think, um, it's eye-opening. And, and I love that, honestly. Um, one of the things that I've always said since the first day we launched Lock and Stock is in doing what we're doing, if I can help give that extra nudge or push to the next bunch of 17-year-olds or 18-year-olds or 19-year-olds, and I'm saying this like I'm 45, I'm 26, <laughs> uh, but the next bunch of 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds in Dubai, smart kids, smart kids, ambitious, aspiring, whatever, to go out there and creatively or find creative, prob creative solutions to existing problems, I think that Dubai and the UAE and the world will be a much better place for it. There we go. Craig, this has been phenomenal. Really, I, I, I am very, very appreciative of you making the time to come out and have this chat. It's it, it, motivational, motivational, informative. The pleasure is all mine, James, honestly. Thank you so much for having me. The pleasure's been all mine. Craig Fernandez, tell us where we can find you. I am not on Instagram. I'm not on Facebook, so don't bother looking for me there. <laughs> if you want to find me, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn. I am... Just send me a connection request or drop me a DM. I love talking startups. I love um, providing help or advice or mentorship or whatever. I'm always available. Drop me a DM on LinkedIn. That's where you can find me. For Secure My Scholarship, that's www.securemyscholarship.com. Um, free to use website. If you are a student looking to, go, looking to go to university for an undergrad or a master's degree, Find us at Secure My Scholarship. Spend five minutes, submit your application, get your scholarship, save a ton of money when going to university. Um, and that's, that's that. Again, thank you very much and look forward to doing this again. Thanks a lot, James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.